and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. And today we are going to be talking about Kathleen Light's new nail polish line, Lights Lacquer, if you had tried KL polish in the past. So Kathleen left KL Polish, which was her original brand, and started Lights Lacquer because of some business dealings. We are not going to go into that in this video, but we are basically going to break down the ingredients in the new formula, and I'm going to give you my opinion on it. First, we're going to kind of go into the difference between the two formulas. Basically, so the first five ingredients are the same in the same order, and and when I use these, I cannot tell a significant difference between the KL polish and the Lights Lacquer formula. So that is really, really good news if you were a fan of KL polish like I was. Um, Kathleen Lights knows her nail polish. The brush is great. The bottle's great. The formula is pretty much the same. I really, I cannot tell the difference. So in my opinion, the changes in ingredients are very, very minimal in these formulas. So when I went on the Lights Lacquer website, they do not have the ingredients listed on there. Sometimes companies won't put the ingredients on their website. The formula can change. They don't want to put it on there. It is on the bottle itself when you do receive the product, which I do like because sometimes on boxes you lose a box and then you won't have the info. But it would be really nice if they would put the ingredients on the website. Maybe just put a disclaimer, see product packaging for a latest list because in this case, which we're going to get into next, she does call this product seven free, which is a whole vague term we're not going to get into. But if you do want to be more transparent about what's in your product when what you believe shouldn't be in your product, then I think it's important to have those ingredients displayed in a place when at the point of purchase. But that's just my two cents on that. So the first two ingredients are ethyl and butyl acetate, and these are going to be the solvents in this formula. And these are volatile, meaning they evaporate in at room temperature. This is what evaporates off when your nail polish dries when you paint your nail. And this is what all the pigments and the other stuff is going to dissolve into. And that's what's going to kind of give it that acetone smell like when you open a bottle of nail polish. And over time, if you notice your nail polish drying out, kind of getting crusty, it's because from continuous opening, opening and exposure to the air, these solvents are evaporating and that's giving it a thicker formula, maybe not as a stable of a formula. And that's why a lot of times they'll tell you, oh, add nail polish remover into there to try to help thin it out again. And you'll notice the nail polish removers that they'll usually have a similar type of acetate or acetone ingredients because how the nail polish remover works is it's basically re-dissolving all the nail polish that you had put on your nail and now has evaporated and you've been left behind with the solid film residue. So the next ingredient is nitrocellulose and this is the main film former in this formula. So when the butyl and ethyl acetate evaporate, the nitrocellulose forms a film on the nail and leaves that hard film. So nitrocellulose is probably the most common film former that's used because it is so durable and forms quickly under ambient conditions. So this makes it ideal for painting your nails to dry quicker and last longer. And the next ingredient is acetyl tributyl citrate. And this is important because this is going to act as a plasticizer for these film forming ingredients. So the problem is, is that these film formers can be very brittle and they can be very tough. So by incorporating an ingredient like this, a plasticizer, you are going to help make the film more flexible and bendable. And this is going to help the nail polish be more durable and is going to last longer. Sterile conium bentonite is a thickener in this. This is going to help suspend those pigments, the other ingredients in there, and this is going to help the, keep the formula from separating by keeping these suspended in the formula. The next ingredient is a benzophenone one, and this is a UV absorber. And how this works in the nail polish is this helps prevent the nail polish from changing color when exposed to light. So that means when you're wearing your nail polish, it's not gonna change color. In the bottle, it's not gonna change color because the bottles are clear and they can be very sensitive. This is gonna help prevent any sort of color change that might occur. So I would 100% recommend this formula. I absolutely love this formula. The only other brand I really use is Hollow Taco, but I use that more for like base coats and top coats. The lights lacquer, color style is more my thing. I'm really happy she kept the thick 
brush. I'm really happy she kept the opaque formula. It applies very opaque to coats max. And if you do like painting your nails, I would highly recommend checking out Kathleen's nail polishes. I'm very excited to see what she comes up with. Well, I was very sad when she left Kale Polish and Kale Polish was going to be no longer, but I'm very thankful that this new nail polish brand ha is just as good. I hope that you guys enjoyed this breakdown of the nail polish and my little review on it. And if you want to see more videos like this, give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to click subscribe so you won't miss any of my videos. And with that, I will see you in my next video.